Hi, this is writing a spreadsheet that will transform points using matrices. And we'll do some reflections and rotations. You can do some scalar multiplication. You can do a lot of different things. But we're going to do the matrices and set this up. I'm doing this for my pre-calculus class. So um, that's the focus of what this video is. So if we start off in the spreadsheet, we have some points. And we want to maybe plot these points, but then we want to try to rotate them as well. So let's start off by highlighting these. If you don't have those in, just pause and get those in. I want to highlight these, and I want to do uh, insert. This is off my screen here. But I want to go over here to scatter, and I want to do a smooth scatter plot, which is this one here. And there is my smooth scatter uh, um, scatter plot. I need to probably add in the point zero zero so I can get this figure back to where I started from. Now, to add in points into my graph, I have to click on my graph, and you see these blue and purple lines. Those are represented for my graph, and so there it is right there. So what I consider this this is kind of a leaf shape, and so I can see how I rotate that or I reflect it, etc. Now what I want to do with this, uh, let's get this out of the way a little bit. We want to take this matrix here and we want to flitz around with this somewhat. So if I take a matrix and I write in 1, 0, 1, 0, and then I put in 0, 1. This is the identity matrix. And we're just going to start off with the multiplication. And when we do the multiplication, we would just want to come down here and add in the additional points. So in other words, I'm going to rotate this 0, 0. I shouldn't say rotate, but I'm going to multiply this by these factors here. Since this is the identity matrix, not much is going to happen. But we're going to set up the calculations at the very least. So if I do this, I'm going to go equal to matrix multiplication I go across here so this would be this value times this value and I want to go plus B1 times D4 and that's going to be the calculation so I can enter that in and I should get 0 0 it isn't going to be too or shattering here now to get the Y coordinate I do a similar type situation I set up the formula A1 times, I go to the second column, and then I go plus a, a B1 times E4, and I enter those in. Now what happens with this is that I just want to fill this down, and I can fill this down repetitively to see what happens. Now, when I do fill this down, though, I want this matrix. This is my uh, transformation matrix. I want this thing to stay the same. So in my calculations, wherever I see the E3, I want to put in a dollar sign. And E4, I want to put in the dollar sign as well. And I have to do this over on this calculation, too. So D, put in the dollar sign. I do want the coordinates to increment. So I want these coordinates to increment down, but I don't want the rotational or um, transformational matrix to fill down. So now if I fill this down, I get these values. And I want to go ahead and plot those. And so I go ahead and I drag this down again. Now it's not going to be too interesting, but now what we can do with our matrix is that we can figure out what happens when I plug in negative 1, for instance. Negative 1 for my uh, upper left most value in my matrix is going to rotate about the y axis. Now you should ask, why is that? Well, this is working on the x coordinates. If I do a similar type thing, but I do it for the other coordinate, I put in negative 1. So that's reflection. And then if I put in negative 1, negative 1, then that's going to be actually a rotation around the origin by 180 degrees. So what I want you to do eventually is in your paper, I want you to summarize what happens when you take put different values in here. 
Now for the next step, what I want to do is I want to do a rotational matrix. With a rotational matrix, I'm going to use this for my rotational matrix. Now what, what you'll see many places is that you'll see a negative sign here and a positive sign here for the rotational matrix. Why this is in this form is because I am doing my coordinate points in a vertical column. That other formula that you see quite often would be that the points would all be in uh, along a horizontal uh, situation. So if I do this now, uh, the spreadsheet will read radians. So what I want to do is I want to put a degree rotation and then I need to transform it to radians. So for instance, if I put 45 in here, I want to convert this. So I'm going to go equal to, and if you remember your conversions, you have to take this value. So I'm going to click on the cell and I'm going to multiply it by pi. And the representation for pi is pi open parenthesis, close parenthesis. And then I needed to divide by 180. So I should get pi over 4 here, which is just over 3 quarters, and that should be right. And so in my matrix here now, I type in these values. So this is going to be equal to the cosine, and I'm going to do it of this angle measurement. And then I'm going to put in... This one is going to be equal to the sine of this angle measurement. And this one would be equal to negative sine. So I'm just following what I put in there before. And then we have, doesn't look like much yet, but watch this. Now cosine of this angle measurement. I didn't put equal. Got to put equal to establish your formula. And let's see if this rotates by 45 degrees. There it looks like it was 45 degrees. So that that's how I'm going to rotate this. Now what I did was I filled down here. What I can do really is I can fill down for as long as I want. And so in other words, this is going to rotate one leaf by 45 degrees. What if I want to do it again? Another 45, another 45. All I have to do is fill this down. Not like that, I got to grab, grab the handlebar here. Fill this down. Say for instance, I want to go 240. Woo, that's a long ways. And uh, what I need to do is click on the graph again, and I need to make sure this graph goes down there, down to 240. There might be some shortcuts that you can do to do this, but I don't know offhand. So I just scroll down. And there I go, 240. And so if I look at my picture now, my picture does all these fancy rotations. Isn't that nice? Now 45 is divisible into 180 and so if I take values similar to that I'm gonna get some nice shapes. But watch if I go 61. Oh that's pretty huh? And so what I want to do is figure out what kind of shapes I'm going to get, and I could continue on. I'm, I'm seeing little gaps in here in different places, and that's just probably because I didn't go down far enough. I could probably go down further. If I go 65, there's another shape. And so we get some quite interesting things. So in summary, I've just taken these values here, and I've rotated them repetitively over and over again. Now, one thing that happens here is that typing in these different values, well, that's okay. 72. Oh, that one comes out nice. What happens, though, is that if I want to do this quickly and I want to create something that's more random, I can use what we call a random number generator. If I go over here and just type in rand, and I got to do open parenthesis, close parenthesis, this will generate a number between 0 and 1. 
If I hit F9 on my PC, some Macs it works, some Macs it does not work. But if I hit F9, that is going to keep on changing my random value. My random value is always between 0 and 1. And so what happens with this random value is that I want to generate many of these and between maybe 0 and 90. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take equal to 90 and I'm going to go times my random number. And so what this will do is that since rand is between 0 and 1, I take it times 90. And what will happen is that this will generate numbers between 0 and 90. And so with this, if I start hitting F9 now, now I see a lot more different things come about. And there's always some, everything isn't perfectly symmetrical probably because they don't fill down far enough. So this is one example where uh, I could keep f uh, filling down and create more points. If you want to do that, go ahead. And so this would complete the different pattern that we have there. That's a small angle measurement. Now the other thing that we want to do that would make this even more interesting is to randomize my points. So if I take this point here, I'm going to go equal to, and arbitrarily I'm going to use 10, just because most windows go from negative 10 to 10. And I'm going to do this times the rand and put that in there. And what I can do is I can fill this across, and that will do 10 times rand. All of these will be different random numbers, though, for each cell. And so I'm going to get different values. And look at my shape already. Now, if I hit F9. Now, if you don't have F9, you can just type on a cell. And I believe you have to maybe delete it. And you just have to change something in the spreadsheet, and that will change the random numbers. Now, we get some just fantastic designs. Look at that one. I find this to be quite fun. I can do this for a long time. So right now I'm just pushing delete on my computer. I hope it works on your Mac. Otherwise, F9 also works. And when I did delete, I put it on a cell that I'm, I'm not using. Like I said, I could do this all day. I hope you enjoy this. And this is how to set up a spreadsheet with random numbers. And I should probably include that on my topic, but to use random numbers to generate many, many different shapes very quickly. Thank you.